Hello. So, OpenNMTPY version 3 was released just recently. And in this video, what I'm planning to do is to go through this change and see if I need to update Argos Train, which is my application built on top of this. And I'm also going to be using Explain Paper and GitHub Copilot, which are two AI-powered tools for computer programming. Um, and so the hope is to both demonstrate these tools and also do some educational content around OpenNMT and Argos Train. Um, so just some background, it's really quite impressive. The language models have been getting better like every month uh, for the past two years. Um, and they're getting to the point where they're actually impressively good and pretty useful for very general level tasks, um, which is pretty crazy. And uh, since obviously I'm not getting any smarter, the kind of obvious thing to try to do is to use these AI tools to train even better AIs, which is what I'm planning to work on today. So I took this forum post and I exported it as a PDF in Brave, and then I uploaded it to explainpaper.com. And so we can see this all here, and then I'm planning to go through this and then see if I want to make any updates to Argos Train, which is my application. So, here we go. We're pleased to announce release OpenNMTPY 3.0. OpenNMTPY is the Python library for neural machine translation. Yep. This is the third major release of OpenNMTPY, and it is a significant update. The user is a novice reading a research paper. Who are you calling a novice? <laughs> the text explains that OpenNMTPY v3 is a Python library for neural machine translation, and it is the third major release of OpenNMTPY. Uh, so this is all correct. It seems to just kind of be restating things and also calling me a novice. So I'm not sure about this so far. Um, OK. The main motivation was to simplify the dating lo data loading API, which relied on an old version of TorchText. We decided to remove completely TorchText from the scope of OpenNMTPY. Um, What are the likely locations of moving torch text? The main motivation for the change was to simplify the data loading API, which relied on an old version of torch text. The decision was made to remove torch text from OpenNMT entirely. Okay. The removal of torch text is likely to simplify the data loading API for OpenNMTPY. Um, okay. We keep the paradigm of on-the-fly data processing, which enables two key points. No need to pre-process data as much in many other toolkits, which means that you can easily adjust your data set, change the weights of each source to push some specific content domain versus another, and subsequently there is no need to shard as in many other toolkits because we load data as an iterable data set with a predefined bucket size. Um, so I don't know what this is saying. There's no need to shard. Uh, this, te this text is saying that there's no need to shard the data because our, okay, so just restating it. What does, explain what shard means in this context. Sharding is a process of dividing a database into smaller pieces called shards. Each shard is a separate database that contains a subset of the data. Okay. Um, I'm not really sure if that's right. Okay. Um, so here, I already process my data in Argos train before passing it to OpenNMT. Will I get any benefit from this change? This text is saying that you don't need to do anything special to your data before using the toolkit, unlike many other toolkits. This is convenient because it means you can easily change your data set without having to do anything first. No. Okay, well I guess that's reasonable. 
We would like to insist on a key specific points. On key specific points. Some toolkits will recommend an average end checkpoint at the end of training. We give the opportunity for small overhead. Uh, we give the opportunity for small overhead to average during training. Oh, interesting. Um, okay, so what this is saying is that the um, you can in average the checkpoints together to kind of get a combination of um, different checkpoints. So I actually do this in Argos train. If we look, um, yeah, right here. So what I do is I take, so I'll train to like 50,000 checkpoints, but then I'll average the 50th thousand checkpoint with the um, 49th thousand checkpoint. Just if you get a kind of any weirdness in one specific checkpoint, this kind of smooths that out and you get more of a rolling average. So what this is saying is that um, it's saying some toolkits recommend what I'm doing and then they give the opportunity to average during training. So you could like, instead of just averaging the final two checkpoints like I'm doing, you could be averaging them as you go. Um, so I guess my question would be, like, is this worth doing? Um, if I already um, average my final two points, would I get any benefit from using the average decay? Um, so this may be wrong, because they seem to indicate that maybe there is some benefit, but, or maybe, uh, explain paper knows something I don't. Um, okay. Then, the vanilla transformer uses sinusoidal position encoding, position encoding equals true. We recommend using maximum relative positions encodings instead. Max relative position equals 20, position encoding equals false, which again is a small overhead. Okay, so this is the change that I think I may actually want to do. So if we look at um, um, yeah, so here's your transformer encoder. So we have the input coming in, and then this is the sinusoidal position encoding. So essentially they um, multiply the input embeddings by the, um, the position in the input uh, passed through a sinusoidal function, which then the model is able to use this to determine which um, inputs were in which places, uh, like in which order. Um, so they're recommending not doing this um, and doing this instead. We recommend using a maximum relative position encoding instead. Um, so explain what a maximum relative position encoding is. A maximum relative positions encoding is a type of positional encoding that uses the maximum relative position of words in a sentence rather than their absolute positions. This has the advantage of being more efficient and having a smaller overhead. Um, uh, more. The maximum, the maximum relative positions encoding is more efficient because it only uses the maximum relative positions of words in a sentence rather than their absolute positions. This means that it requires less memory and is faster to compute. 
It also has a smaller overhead, which means that it takes up less space memory. Um, so I don't really understand what maximum relative positions means. Um, so relative position would be like the position relative to other tokens in the sequence, and then the max of the, uh, yeah, I, I don't really understand. Um, what or how do you calculate the maximum relative position? To calculate the maximum relative positions, you first need to find the maximum position of each word in the sentence. Then you subtract the position of the word from the maximum position. Um, then you subtract the position of the word from the maximum position. This gives you the maximum relative position for each word. Um, how do you calculate the maximum position of a word sentence? To calculate the maximum position of a word in a sentence, you first need to find the position of the word in the sentence. Then you subtract the position of the word from the length of the sentence. This gives you the maximum position of the word in the sentence. Um, so if like the word is, okay, so if the word um, pre is the fourth word in a ten word sentence, then the maximum position of tree is um, 10 minus 4 equals 6. Yes, that is correct. Okay. And then to first find the maximum position of each word, then you subtract the position of the word from the So this seems to be describing the same thing. Um, so in my example, the tree is the sixth. Then you subtract the position of the word from the maximum position. Um, I, I think it may be wrong about understanding this. This doesn't make a ton of sense. Or maybe I just don't understand it. Um, okay, whatever. Um, but if the folks at OpenNet MTPY recommend it, we can just do this then. So they say position, remove position encoding and max relative positions equals 20. So I'm here in the config.yaml in Argos train. And I think I'm probably using position encoding. Ooh, yep, there it is. Um, okay. False and max relative position. So uh, I have GitHub Copilot rec um, enabled, so I'm going to try to see if what it recommends for this value. Um, okay, nothing. We'll do 20. Okay. All right, so I'll keep moving. Um, we keep the fused Adams old legacy code, which provides the best performance and speed compared to PyTorch, AMP Adams floating point 16, Apex level 0102. We, text, we tested the new Adam fused equals true release, release with PyTorch 1.13, but it is way slower. Um, hmm. uh, I don't so Adams is the um, optimizer. Um, and so it looks like I tried to maybe change to a newer version of it in PyTorch, but found it was worse. Um, using the research and how we transform, the fused Adam code provides the best speed performance compared to the other code options. Um, yeah, so this is correct. Okay. 
Um, so it sounds like I don't have to do anything for this. Um, okay, always use the highest batch size possible to your GPU RAM capacity and use an update interval according to the true batch size if you to the true batch size you want. For instance, if your GPU can accept um, 8,192 tokens, then you then if you use accumulation count 12, you will have a bat, true batch size of 9, 98,304 tokens. Um, okay. Um, so I, I don't actually know what I'm using for that. Let's see, batch size 4096. Um, so I may have one running now. I can see how much. Um, oh, no, never mind, I don't. Um, so, in my experience, the. Um, I haven't been using all the GPU memory, even just on 13090, so I bet I can increase this a bit. Um, what, so let's see if either Explain Paper or GitHub Copilot um, can help me with this. Okay. Um, so in, by my memory, I think the a 3090 has, I don't know, like 8 or 12 gigabytes of GPU RAM. Um, and I think I'm only using like four. So my uh, my assumption is I can probably about double this. So I have um, 4,000, and in their example, they're doing 8,000. So I may just use this exact number. Um, but let's see if either of these tools can help me out. OK, so the text is saying that you should use the highest batch size possible for your GPU RAM capacity. Yep, this will give you the best results. All right, that's exactly what I want to do. Um, what is a good batch size to use with a single um, RTX 3090 GPU? There is no definitive answer to this question, as it will vary depending on the specific application and hardware involved. However, as a general rule of thumb, it's generally advisable to use the highest batch size possible for your GPU RAM capacity. What is the largest batch size I could use on a RTX 3090? Um, okay, so I think it's also just copying, but that is exactly what I was doing. So um, let's see what uh, GitHub Copilot says. Um, so let's delete. Um, 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 um. Um, so no recommendations from GitHub Copilot. Okay, but I'll just use this number directly that they gave. Um, and this is generally how I've set the um, almost all of these parameters. So there's a um, they have some examples here, um, and I essentially just copied this, copied this copy this. Um, so I'll do the same thing with this value. Okay. Um, adjust. Ooh. Adjust the bucket size to your CPU RAM. Most of the time a bucket between 2,000, 200,000 and 500,000 examples will be suitable. The highest your bucket size is, the less padding you will have since examples are sorted based on this bucket and batches yield yield from this bucket. Um, so I don't, what is, okay. The text is telling the reader to adjust the bucket size to their CPU param. Um, okay, so essentially restating it. What is the bucket size?
Um, how do I set the bucket size? Um, this seems like maybe just a small speed improvement, so I may not even bother with this. Um, so it's just restating, but doesn't seem to know how to actually fix it. So I have 32,000. Um, most of the time between 200,000 and 500,000. Oh, so I should increase this quite a bit then. Um, let's do 250,000. Um, so see, no recommendation. Uh, GitHub Copilot doesn't seem to really be recommending anything in these uh, this config file, which is too bad. All right, 250,000. Um, let's see what they do here too. They, oh, it's funny. Uh, so they're not even following their own recommendation. Um, but, okay. So we did this. Okay, few changes versus v2. The checkpoint has changed. Uh, so I don't really save checkpoints. I found with OpenNMT, um, I've done a lot of work in Argos train to uh, really automate the training. So like I can auto, um, I can auto download all of the data automatically. And then the actual training is all automated here. Um, so I don't really save checkpoints. Um, I just retrain from scratch every time. I, I do want to add some better support for checkpoints at some point, but for now it's making my life easier because I don't have to deal with like upgrading binary compatibility between V2 and V3. Um, okay. The default inference is now with length penalty equals average, which provides better results in most of the cases. It will make things comparable to other toolkits, always forgotten in benchmarks. Um, so the length penalty is um, the length penalty is the longer the output that transformer decoder creates, the it'll count being extra long as like having larger loss. Um, so um, it'll like discourage the model from generating really large outputs. And um, this is useful because sometimes you kind of get loops where it'll just kind of generate the same thing over and over again. Uh, I'll see if I can find, I know there's an example of this. Um, Yeah. So this is what the length penalties designed to prevent. Um, so like this user wanted to translate Ensalada from Spanish to English. And then the model caught itself in some sort of a loop um, and just generated like 40 salads. Um, and so the point of the length penalty is after it's created like 10 salads, it's like, okay, uh, this is getting pretty long. I'm going to uh, cut this off. So I think it. Um, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So this is this is the point of the length penalty. Um, but it looks like I don't have to do anything. They've just made length penalty equals average. Uh, unless I do, I set it manually. Um, no. Okay. So I don't think I have to do anything there. We've made our best efforts to uniformize some code structures, but of course it's not perfect. Also, we've not reworked the library examples. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so maybe I'll do a pull request to uh, increase this to be in line with the recommendation. Um, okay. Um, so in this case, I actually didn't think either of the tools was all that helpful. Um, GitHub Copilot didn't actually recommend anything at all. And um, explain paper is mostly just kind of restating things. 
Um, I think it was a little helpful around um, actually yeah it, it really didn't actually end up helping all that much um, it was kind of neat though um, yeah I was kind of disappointed too that the uh, github copilot didn't uh, isn't really recommending anything in this yaml file so I can try like major performance boost No, worth a try. Um, optimize for RTX 3090. I wish GitHub Copilot had a. Oh. I wish GitHub Copilot had a way to like. Oh, did I have it disabled before? Um, Um, oh, what's it oh, I might have had it disabled before. Oops. Um, step by step explain. Okay. Um, so I might have actually had this disabled. So let's see if I can. Uh, get it to do some of the things I was trying to do earlier. Okay, so batch, no, what was it? Um, wait, what was the thing I, uh, uh, bucket. Okay. So they say 10,000, which is actually reasonable, close to what I used to have, but we now know that 200,000 to 500 is what we want. Um, okay, uh, what was the other one? I was messing with... Um, batch size. Okay, um, so it seems to be able to generate reasonable parameter values. I think I'm going to stick with um, what I have, though. Okay, uh, so that's all I have. Thanks for watching.